start by recording. So, okay, let's record this session as well. And let's talk about some BGP advanced features. Unfortunately, with this session, you will not see my beautiful face, but uh, we will enjoy with a lot of other stuff. Uh, okay, I was explaining, there was one question before I jump into what uh, today topic for the BGP, there was a question, uh, which is with today's memory available, could it be argued that route reflectors could be eliminated entirely? And uh, my answer is uh, no, especially, you shouldn't relate the number of routers in your network with the uh, route using route reflection or not. Even if you have just two, three, four routers, you sometimes you have to do what I told you, you have to do route reflection. Let me explain why. Imagine this three router, but it could be just two edge router also. This three edge router from this one upstream internet in our topology, by the way, these routers, this all of these routers are IBGP and this one EBGP neighbor. So our upstream, let's say global internet. Now three of these routers, your answer, Paul, three of, those, of these routers, if they all receive fully internet routing tables, which is today 800,000 prefix as of 2020. 800,000, huh. Let's eliminate now route reflection for a minute and let's connect them uh, full mesh IBGP. By the way, at this moment, uh, these links are showing uh, physical connectivities, not IBGP peering, although they are physically connected like this. As you can see, this is not still full mesh, but uh, like partial mesh top or hub and spoke, you can also think about. But uh, our topology normally with the route reflector. But for my example, let's remove route reflector. What happens if I connect edge router to PE router? So these routers to these routers huh? in a full mesh manner, which means all those three advertises all the prefixes to each and every PE. So each and every PE, they have to receive now 800,000 from here, 800,000 from here, 800,000 from here. So they need to keep 2.5 million, 2.4 million prefixes in their ribbon table. You don't have to place in a FIP, but uh, you might do maybe not uh, ECMP. So in, in case of PGP multipath, maybe you might be dealing with the uh, phase three route, which I will do, I will demonstrate today, by the way. Okay. So, but what happens if you connect in a full mesh, you have to carry all the prefixes to the edge router. What happens now if you connect route reflector though? So all those 2.4 million prefixes comes to the route reflector. Of course, I am assuming you don't increase lo local preference anywhere. If you increase, like, let's say, local preference here, 200, and the others are just 100, 100, this router you are selecting as the best, which means the others two sends the withdrawn, and which means the router operator still will get 800,000 prefix. But I am assuming now you are not favoring any pet, uh, so that's why you don't change any BGP attribute. All those 2.4 million comes to router reflection. Now router operator does by default what? Select only one best pet from its point of view now. Uh, if you don't change any attribute, what I told you, Route Reflector will look at the IGP costs and in this network OSPF run, by the way, I will show you now, OSPF runs and then uh, based on its view, and I arranged this cost uh, at lowest cost on this interface, uh, 005, so Route Reflector in this topology would select R7 and only with the R7 as the next top, 800,000 prefixes would be pushed to the PEs. So PEs now, instead of 2.4 million with route reflection, by the full configuration of route reflection, they just keep 800,000, three times less memory usage. Why I said that uh, in the first place, you have to, because not everyone is lucky to have very high end devices to keep all those 2 point some million prefixes. Huh? That's important. When we put route reflection and it hides the path, we call it hiding the path hide all visible pets, J just send one, not all of them, huh? then only one. But if we want, if we have enough memory, maybe we want to send all those three. Why we would want to send all those three? It will be very obvious, by the way, when I start this topology. Okay, what is that? If there's only one best pet, how will the destination R8 be loaded shared some somewhat equally between R5, R6, R7. If there's only one best pet, okay, from the P point, I think. How will the destination R8? Ah, okay, yeah, destination is this one. B, load shared somewhat 
equally between you cannot do that on anyway but uh, there are, you can maybe do with the other ways just with bgp if you send only best path to the pe's r2 r3 r4 in this network you cannot do of course this okay uh, with just BGP. If you enable other protocols, PBR, those kind of things, now let, let's not involve those things. Okay? It's just with BGP, you cannot. You need to send more than one base path. That's it. So how we can send from route reflector more than one base path? Uh, by the way, what I told you, what I told you, this. Uh, sending more than one base path is possible via multiple methods, by the way. These are adpad, shadow route reflection, etc. And also in MPLS network, we have unique RD per BRF per, per PE approaches. I will not deep dive all of them. Okay. I will demonstrate you adpad. So we will send maybe more than one, two pads, maybe all of them, etc. But also I want to focus on this feature. Now just give your attention to this one because I will start doing lab. Uh, he, ex this one is exactly my topology here, my configuration. Just a little bit colorful, huh? and also uh, matrix here. I didn't put on this topology, that's why I am using this one. But exactly the same thing we have: single route reflector for simplicity, and three edge gateways. Those edge, edge gateways connected to upstream and receiving prefix in my topology eight 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 eight. Huh? One prefix comes to three of those edge gateways. Edge gateways have IBGP peering with route reflection, and then. PE is also IBGP peers only with the route reflectors. So when you put the route reflectors, all the guys just peer with the route reflectors, not uh, client to client peering. We don't have that, okay? You Can you do? In theory, yes, no need. Huh? Uh, so, also, please don't write something. When I finish, you can uh, ask question, we can discuss. When you do that now, uh, I want to answer, etc. Don't interrupt. So, also PEs, and listen here, this is important. I prepare for you after 10 years, 12 years. So PE is IGP cost you can see. So physical connectivity, this, uh, this links also here, all these physical connectivities you are seeing. So IGP cost, OSPF is running in my network. It could be ISS, but only this BGP optimal route reflection function, which I will show you now, can run only with the link state protocols, OSPF and ISS. I will explain why. Now PE device, PE, 1 to IG1, IGW1, IGW2, IGW3, I am showing the cost. And same thing for PE2 and PE3. And route reflector here, route reflector cost also, OSPF cost to IGW3 is 10, IGW2 is 20, IGW1 is 30. Now when you have route reflectors, what we just told you, that prefix come from upstream and three of those IGW receive, I am not changing anything like local preference, everything same, local preference, AS, pet, origin, mat, after that, in IBGP network, hot potato routing step is used to compare the paths, which is IGP cost to BGP network. That's why route reflector will compare the paths, which one is smallest IGP cost to the, that uh, prefix BGP next stop. That prefix comes with the three BGP next stop, right? So one IGW3 is the next stop, uh, 8888, IGW2, 8888, IGW1, 8888. Which one is the shortest IGP cost? This one. That's why route reflector, we will see that it will choose the shortest cost, which is this IGW3, but, and it will send all of them, it's on whatever he thinks that is the closest one, it will send to each and every PE that one. But what I will do with the optimal route reflection, I will not send all those three paths to these guys. By the way, think about it. With EdPad, what we are doing, all those three, if I send to all those PE, so all three IGWs, if I send to PE1, PE2, and PE3, now PE1 has three of those pets. PE1 can compare the shortest pet, can compare the IGP cost. Okay, I know this prefix come from here, here, and here. Route reflector told me, but you need to use add pet function, as I told you. I will show you also how you can use it. And we will see that one as well. And then, but I am just setting the ground so you understand the problem space. So if you send all of them, all of them, then of course the trade-off is you are using more memory, maybe, huh? more CPU, more memory, but you will end up with the optimal routing from each client point of view, each route reflector client point of view. But I don't want to do that, maybe. I will just send one best path from the route reflector, but not route reflector's own best path. 
I will send from route reflector a, a next stop best path for the prefix to PE1, uh, IGW1, because shortest path from the PE1 to IGW1 is this one, 10. So PE2, I should send which one? 20, 10. IGW2 and PE3, IGW3. Okay, we will achieve this one with the BGP optimal route reflection, and I will do this first. And then what I will do, I will remove the optimal route reflection. You will see that route reflector will send all of those PEs, all of those in this in our network R2, R3, and R4, its own uh, short path, which is this one. Okay. And then what we will do is, okay, uh, there is no route optimal route reflection, let's say. Huh? And if there is no optimal route reflection, by default, RR will send the shortest path from its point of view. Then I will add add path. With the add path, I will send three of those paths. You will see that each and every PE will still choose. PE1 will choose IW1, PE2, IW2, and PE3, IW3. But what is the trade-off? I will send all of those paths with the add path. For me to do optimal routing guarantee for each and every client, I need to send each and every uh, every uh, intent gateway in my network because think about it if I would send from route reflector only IGW1 and IGW2 then I PE3 couldn't choose the shortest path because PE3 point of view normally IGW3 and if you hide PE3 uh, IGW3 from RR to send uh, to those guys PE3 point of view you cannot do optimal routing that's why we need to send with the add path if my purpose is optimal routing I need to send each and every IGW uh, uh, as a next stop to my PEs. By the way, I am recording fine. So because I am spending a lot of mem memory here, fine. Now let's start. What I did in this topology, by the way, let me introduce the topology. I have OSPF as an IGP running. Then I have IBGP in my network. Here, all these routers except R8, uh, all of them in BGP AS100 and R8 AS200 EBGP neighbor for these guys. And on R8, I am advertising 8888 prefix. So that prefix comes to R5, R6, and R7. Then are those three uh, edge routers. I am not changing any BGP attribute, local preference, etc. I didn't touch. So those guys are sending to RR. And I enabled also optimal route reflection functionality. And uh, I will explain how it works, etc. By the way, what are the com computation commands, etc. And uh, something took my one hour almost to troubleshoot. I will show you. Music windows now happens. Okay, in my network, route reflectors here. And if I check now, and this one, by the way, is running uh, XR, and uh, all the other guys are just IOS, XC, etc. IO add match, etc. So I have, as you can see, the BGP neighborship with the, uh, I used. I created loopback interfaces 2222 etc. with the router number. So 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Huh? Basically, 2, 3, 4, my P is here, and four, 5, 6, 7. All of them, of course, my uh, I am route reflector at the moment. All of them, my route reflector client, right? So if we check, running config also very short. Uh, what I did, by the way, OSPF configuration you are seeing, of course, I played with the cost a little bit. I will show you now those costs, which interfaces I, I uh, changed the cost. But BGP config, very also simple. So I have all those uh, 2222, 333, 4, 4, 4, etc., my clients. What I did, uh, my router ID, address family for IPv4 unit, yes, of course, uh, optimal route reflection works for the uh, VPN address family as well. Thinking AdPad also works for the VPN address family. Here, uh, for simplicity, I just talked about IPv4. By the way, as I told you, I wouldn't use AdPad if I would have VPN, but I would uh, continue with the unique RD per VRF per PE because it doesn't add any other technology, any other protocol in my network, so I don't have to deal with the interactions. Okay, then what I did, by the way, this comment is not necessary. Uh, for the these are optimal route reflection configuration. Okay, I am creating a, basically under uh, IPv4 unicast. I am creating a, this is just word whatever you name it. 
And then for my uh, 222 neighbor, I am placing this IP address to be a root in the short spec uh, first calculation. So 2222. I am expecting this neighbor to send me link state information. Huh? By the way, this is BGP. Why link state? You will see now. Then treat and all of them, of course, my client, as I told you, Raja Peter client. I set up the uh, BGP neighborship over the loopback interfaces, update source, blah, blah, blah. Uh, as I told you, all of them in the same AS. So as you can see, IBGP neighborship and 333. Uh, the other router, other routers from the BGP configuration point of view, same. What is also you maybe didn't see here missed. Let's go to OSPF configuration. Uh, here we need to distribute so OSPF link state information to BGP. Okay, that's why this this configuration comment is very important. Distribute link state. So we are distributing the link state topology information like what is the metric between uh, each and every of this router, R2 to R5, R2 to R6, R2 to R7, R3 to R5, etc. All topology information now, uh, routers are sharing. And anyway, if one router share with the uh, route reflector is enough because each and every router, uh, basically in the network, has the same topology because I am using single array, array zero only. Multi-area design, there is no topology information exchange, then I would connect the route reflector to ABR if there would be multi-area design. But in this network, very simple. So then I, what I did on the route reflector, have a look at this one. I have 0, 0, 0 goes to the R2, 0, 1 goes to R3, uh, so, uh, 0, 2 on the route reflector, 0, 2, this interface goes to R4, but these are not relevant for me at the moment. So I increase the cost there. So I am not hairpinning from route reflector any traffic to, towards the PEs to reach to the uh, gateways. I just guaranteed that. Then what I do here, uh, three, four, five, as you can see, these interfaces, right? How, how I am setting the OSPF cost there? What I told you, I want to favor from route reflector point of view, one of the uh, gateway for that prefix 8888. 8888 comes from here. What I did, I am using OSPF cost, the lowest cost on this interface, uh, gigabit 005. And then second uh, lowest inter interface cost is this one and highest this one. So what I'm saying, if we go to, as you can see, gigabit 005 cost is just 100. And then 004, this interface over C R6, it is 500. And this one is 1000. So what I did, with this one, RR, because OSPF cost will decide for that 8888, what is the best next stop, closest next stop. Now on the RR for that 8888, I should prefer uh, this router, router seven as my next stop. Let's see, OIP, BGP. As you can see what happens here, I am receiving uh, 8888, that loopback interface from three neighbors, three next stop. And by the way, uh, this one is uh, this interface between five and eight. So this one and this one, uh, 68 here and 78 here. As you can see, and this asterisk is showing the best path, by the way. Uh, as you can see, router seven is chosen as the best path. It was obvious because who is deciding lowest metric? lowest IGP metric. By the way, there is a configuration loop here that we can see that uh, those three pets based on the lowest IGP metric was chosen. Show BGP, show BGP, IPv4, I think, IPv4, unicast, uh, then give the prefix, I think, and then length here, uh, enter. Okay, let's see here what happens. It says, uh, it says very nice thing, group best. Is there a detail or something? Yeah, here, best pet compare. So now this, this configuration, of course, uh, for CCA, I think you have to remember this stuff, but normally just imagine, what I am doing here, I know how it will work. And I am trying to find the co configuration comments here. Is there any uh, thing 
configuration loop that can show me why those three paths was chosen, the best path uh, in which attribute was used to choose the best path I am doing. Okay, found it. As you can see, this one says overall best, and for the others, higher IGP metric than best path. Higher IGP metric than best path. If I wouldn't touch with the higher IGP metric, the, and then uh, it would go with the ro lowest router ID step, etc. Okay, unpredictable one, we call it. Anyway, now, okay, so far so good, but uh, a, a, the most fun part is coming, right? What is that? What normally should happen in default BGP behavior, route reflector, what was the route reflector network? Route reflector 78.8. So router 8 should be sent to uh, should be sent to each and every PE in the network as a next stop for the 8888 traffic. So R2, R3, R4, huh? they should all see same next stop for 8888. But for the optimal route reflection, what I told you, if you arrange the cost of this R2, R3, R4, that R2 OSPF cost towards R5, let's say 10, R2's to, uh, to R6, 20, R2's cost to R7, 30, huh? then R2 normally in that case, if it would receive all the prefixes, all, all the next stop for that prefix, R2 will choose R5. And R3, you arrange the metric, R3 should choose R6. So cost here, let's say 10, here 20, here 30. Huh? Let's have a look what's happening. Let's go to R2 now, R2, this router. Come here, what happened? R2, that router, show. Anyway, by the way, you can see uh, from the configuration show IP summary, just I have a uh, IBGP neighborship with the route reflector, 9999. Then what's the prefix? 8888. I am receiving only single path because I didn't enable add path, etc. But it is next stop is different than route reflector. How come? It's showing 58.8, which means what the fuck is happening? Yeah, <laughs> if you don't do much. Okay, what happens? R2 says my uh, BGP next stop to reach to R8, I am using this next stop. Then let's go to R3, let's let's see R3 what it will do. Show IP BGP summary, as you can see, just single BGP neighborship with the route reflection, not route 9999. Then uh, 8888 prefix, this time, 60, 68. So R6 is my next stop. Let's go to R4. What will happen? R4 says R7 is my next stop. Exactly what I was looking for with the visible optimal route reflection, right? Now let's do something. Let's remove visible optimal route reflection. What we should expect if I remove optimal route reflection from this guy? What should be the R2, R3s, and R4s next stop? Tell me. Guys, I am configuring, I am showing the lab. Still, you don't tell me what's happening. Is it, why? Their OSPF best pet? No. They will not decide. R2, R3, R3, R4 cannot decide without optimal route reflection. They cannot decide the best pet. RR can decide for them. On behalf of them, yes, best bet, best bet will be done by the RR point of view. That's why all of them will see R7 because route reflector believes that R7. Why route reflector believed? Because we see the interface cost for the SPF shortest one towards R7. It was okay. Now, by the way, add pet will be even harder for you. Then we will deal with the BFT. Then we will see if there is packet loss. How I I can converge fast. I mean. These are, as a topic is nothing, but configuration-wise takes time, and I say, really, I hate. 
Now let's go to router effector. Let's see the router, router uh, BGP configuration. And then let's remove uh, by the way, on this router, let me show you what's happening when you enable optimal router reflection, show optimal router database with this comment, actually, let's say detail. It shows you actually all the details. Like, okay, if you put, if I put, I am running reverse SPF, if I put 2222 as the actual route from this guy to each and every prefix on this network. So like next stops, etc. this guy's cost, I know. So, by the way, on route effector you are seeing this, and then for three, 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 you are showing, uh, you are, you can see as well. And based on this, route reflector knows to each and every those R two, R three, R four, which next stop should be sent. Hmm? Because now, what is the next stop? These these next stops, and uh, now you can see uh, R three point of view. Uh, so R two point of view. This one twenty. Now, R3 point of view 68 is the shortest, 20, 30, 40, because I arranged it that, that way. Now, what I will do, as I told you, I will remove the optimal route reflection from this, and then I will see on R2, R3, R4. Let me show you again. On R2, as you can see, R2, next stop is router 5. On R3, for the same prefix, the next stop is R6. As you can see, uh, next stop is R6 and R4. Next stop is R7. Now, all of them, when I remove from the route reflector, optimal route reflection configuration, all of them will see uh, routers 7 as the next stop. Then you miss from the PE point of view hot potato routing chance if you want that one. Okay? So, because all of them now send the traffic towards R7 only, and you cannot load balance the traffic, you can not use each and every of your uplink for the for that prefix. Uh, basically, we can just go through. It doesn't allow just removing under uh, router BGP. That's why I will remove from the each and every PE as well. As I told you, I am really really. Slow, that's why it can take some time. And Unicast, no optimal. Route reflection R2, zip, neighbor, 3333, as you're spending, Unicast, no optimal. Route reflection R3. Never before. I was four. Can commit. Then now, what I did, I just remove. What is this? Also, or are users? Yes, reverse SPF. I told you. Uh, so one would. Just Thing you need protocol that does SPF. Yes, that, that's why in the first place I told you OSPF and ASS is required for this. And then now R2, R3, R4, we remove the optimal route reflection. And if you check on the route reflector, so RR, SPF database, uh, it's still there. Maybe we need the convergence in some time. Or better, what I will do, clear IP. GP. GP. Now let's go to R2 and then let's check show IP BGP summary. It's dash and one prefix is coming. That's why let's see now what happened. R2 already changed to R7. R3, let's go to R3. What is the R3 now? Let's see by the way. It came back again, 20 seconds, it's, it has been up now. And let's check the prefix. What I should see, who should be my next stop, tell me. On R2, R3, R4, I, saw, I told you. R7, yes, and R7. What about R4? Of course, on R4 as well, I have R7 as my next stop. Good. Now, if I put the route reflection 
optimal route reflection feature back. Again, route, router 2 uh, will, will think that R5, router 3 will think that R6, router 4 will think that R7. Why? Because, uh, again, let me show you, uh, R2's configuration, R2's interface is less checked OSPF cost because R2 OSPF cost, Ethernet 00 connected to R5, so on this Ethernet 00, I configure the shortest OSPF cost, then little bit higher on Ethernet 01, little bit higher on Ethernet 02, shortest IGP cost I configured on R2, Ethernet 00, let's check. R2, config, okay, R2 config, very fast. R2 is Ethernet 00, IP OSPF cost 10, Ethernet 01, IP OSPF cost 20, 02, 30, uh, etc. as you can see. Ethernet 03 going to R10, I am not using it. Ethernet 10 is going to uh, route reflector. Also, I increased it uh, enough value, not 10, 20, 30, so I am not using it at all, last resort. Okay, uh, from R3 point of view, IGP cost should be what? If R3 with the optimal route, route reflection is seeing R6 as the next stop, then Ethernet 01 OSPF cost should be smallest one. Let's also verify that. Let's go to R3, so run, Ethernet 01 should be right. It, let's check again. Ethernet 01 should be lowest. Yes, because it goes to the R6, it has to be lowest one. Ethernet 00 cost 20, Ethernet 01 cost 10. Uh, OSPF cost and Ethernet 02, OSPF 30. What should be for the R4? R4, Ethernet 00 uh, goes to here, but R4 point of view, I was choosing R7, so R3, R6, R2, R5. So R4 was choosing R7, that's why Ethernet 03 OSPF cost should be the smallest one. R4 here, Ethernet, which one? I forget immediately. Ethernet 03. Ethernet 03. As you can see, Ethernet 0020, 0, Ethernet 0130, uh, Ethernet 03 is 10. So I reduced the Ethernet 03 on that one, 10. So lowest. That's why when you enable the optimal route reflection feature on the route reflector, it was show sending only one path to each client, but, but that path from each client point of view was the best. Huh? Optimal route reflection you only need to do on the route reflector, not on the client. You don't touch the client. But now I will jump into add pet configuration and I will show you add pet feature, add pet configuration. We need to do add pet not only on the route reflector, but also on the route, uh, route reflector client. Reason because there will be pet ID field. That's a new capability, BGP capability. As you, I will show you also, I'm exchanging that capability between the BGP neighbors. Capabilities exchange is done on open message in BGP up the open uh, packet type. And then I told you about the migration window you need to do because the session will go down, etc. When you need, uh, when you negotiate a new address family, new capability. We will go through the AdPad feature now. What is that? What happens if OSPF is doing load balancing? Will the route operator is going to advertise two pads? If OSPF is doing load balancing, okay. Please understand this. Routers, edge router here are to R3, R4. Even if they are doing load balancing for all of those three, let's say P, uh, IGWs, R4, R4, R5, R6, and R7, okay? R2 is, let's say, OSPF cost 10, 10, 10 on those interfaces. Those routers are not deciding anything. Their fate in the hand of route reflector, okay? Ah, route reflector, you can, you can tell yourself this one. Okay, Orhan, what if this one? Route reflector chooses R7 as our BGP next stop, right? This one. Okay, then R2 to reach to that BGP next stop, how many IGP interface it has? Only one. Now, what if Orhan, I would connect R2 with another interface or maybe if I arrange the cost or because R2 normally can reach to R7 on two pets actually. Two pets. Why? Over here, Direct connectivity and also as you can see, route reflector joins the 
joins the IGP through route vector path also it can reach. It's a, they are IGP neighbors, it can reach. So if you arrange that path also same as direct path cost, uh, then you can do underlay ECMP of course. Any other question? I believe you can change that default. It's not something OSPF does and you can take five best and so on. As you can see, if you try to explain to each other, you will uh, you will be wrong. Uh, you ask me for additional load. Can the route reflector send multiple? Exactly. Now we are going to that one. Excellent. Now we are going to that that uh, that one. Route reflector is sending only best path at the moment. We, we removed optimal route reflection feature and only route reflector is sending what? R7 is the best because our route reflector believes that R7 is the best. But now what I will do, I will send from route reflector not only R7 as the best path, but I will send all those three paths actually, R5, R6, and R7 to each and every PE. So, each, so R2, R3, and R4 will receive that 8888 prefix uh, with those R5, R6, and as well as R7 as the next stop. And let's see what will happen. Also, at this moment, let me show you before I advertise. Uh, from the route reflector, all those next stops. Let me show you something. Let's say R2, R2 wants to reach 8888, right? 8888. Ping 8888. Ping 8888. Okay. It's not reaching because it's probably using out source IP as the, the, the interface IP. Let's say source loopback, if it's reaching, it is enough for me. <clears throat> it's also not reaching. Very bad. <laughs> let's troubleshoot why, why it's not. Let's see. Let's go to 8888. Uh, it's not uh, receiving any prefix actually from any of those guys. It seems zero 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 zero. Okay. Uh, I shouldn't look eight 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 eight. It's just uh, his local prefix. It's not receiving anything from them. Okay. Should I peer out? Okay. Fine. They don't have OSPF running here, only we have PGP between these guys. Uh, by the way, there are some configuration for BFTS that I will explain later here. And then IPv4 address family dash and uh, 567 is activated between those guys. This one of five. That's okay. I'm just. I will just for demonstration show R5. That's why two of them is down. I didn't configure them. Okay. And then I don't get any BGP prefix, but my BGP session is up. Okay. Why I don't get any? Let's go to R5, R6, R7. What's happening with them? IP route. I am receiving from OSPF 2222, but I am not advertising into BGP that 2222. What's missing then? Very fast, tell me. You don't have much time. Very fast. I am not advertising into BGP redistribution systems. Let's go to BGP config on this guy. BGP config, there is no redistribution. Okay. Let's redistribute. Normally, you should create just maybe for test purpose if you are doing 2222 route map and then prefix list for 2222 and then assign to route map and then uh, redistribute it. But of course, this is too much. I don't do that one. I will 
in, I will now redistribute everything, but suddenly on each and every router, we will see a lot of prefixes. But uh, forget about those. As I told you, when you inject more information, you just increase the complexity. When you want to troubleshoot, it will be harder for us, but we will focus on 222 now. Okay, what is our router BGP100? Redistribute. Redistribute. Oh, okay, address family, I think. Address family. IPv4. That's why I'm saying address family. IPv4. Then redistribute. OSPF. Process ID is one. And any other thing, no need for E1, etc. Okay, now. And then let's go to R6. R6 also let's do the redistribution. So because from R8 point of view, I want to do multipad later on. If I do multipad, you will see why I will do multipad. Router uh, BGP 100. Huh? Then redistribute address family. Address family. IPv4. Then redistribute. OSPF one R seven same thing router BGP one hundred uh, address family IPv four redistribute OSPF one now if I go to R eight I should be able to see any more here in the summary also of <laughs> not just one prefix. Uh, but as I told you, we, because I didn't create route map, etc., we are seeing a lot of prefix anymore, as you can see. But uh, I told you, forget about the others, but focus on 2222. What I am seeing on 222M something M, in fact, you are seeing those M's because at the moment I configured also multipad, yes. I will show you that one as well, multipad configuration I did. So that's why 2222 prefix at the moment is reachable via 5, 6, and 7. But I will remove that. First, let me show you multiple configuration. Then I will remove that because I want to show you the convergence time, how long it will take. How long it will take. What adpad will do for that? When we add adpad, without multipad, what will happen? With adpad as well as multipad, what will happen? Huh? So many things to uh, play with. Okay, as you can see, maximum pet three comments is basically three uh, neighbors I have, and in EBGP I want to do uh, multipet I set, but I will remove that one first for time. Being. No, it's 200 on R8, uh, address family IPv4, no maximum pet three. Now, if I check show IP BGP table, uh, let's not wait for the conversions. Clear IP BGP. Of course, in real life, don't do that. Show IP BGP, summary, otherwise they will fire you. That's why, don't do that. Show IP BGP summary sending again all the prefixes. Now there is no M, etc. because I remove multipad. But of course I am receiving from three of my neighbors, no multipathing, I remove that, okay? Uh, I, I am preferring five, router five, for whatever reason here it's preferring. Uh, costs are same, IGP cost probably, it's looking for the low router ID. Let's check if this router also giving that common show BGP IPv4 Unicast, uh, it's giving, yeah, let's see, then, Unicast 8888, uh, sorry, 2222, uh, what was that? Best pet, let's see if it shows the reason. It's not doing the same action. Multipad maybe, detail maybe. <laughs> okay, two, 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 two only. Is, is this showing anything that uh, because I am using low router ID, etc. 
No, no, it's done. It, we don't need to do clear IPBGP. It's already showing what we are looking for. Only one base path is the best. Okay? No uh, EBGP multipath. Now, what I want to do, when I go to R2, this moment, if I ping anymore, I should be huh, able to ping. Uh, but I want also ping from, let's say, loopback. And I don't want to ping with the loopback just five times. What I will do, guys, R2 at the moment, which one R2 is next up? By the way, let's learn for the prefix 8888. It was R7, right? Show IPBGP uh, for 8888 R7. Okay. Trace root numeric, we can do later on. Eight, R7, what I will do, R7 I will shut, and let's see how long it will take to converge. In fact, I would like to do on the R5, because all the configuration already I finished on the R5 for the phase 3 route, etc. Uh, so, what I will do, I will just go to a route reflector and make sure route reflector is choosing not R7 on R2, R3, and R4, but R5 is the best path. So that's why on gigabit 0003 will be, OSP of course will be smaller than 4 and 5 on our crowd separator. So 3 will be smallest one. At the moment, 5 is smallest one. As uh, you can see, 5 is 100. 3 is 1000. I will change the 3 is close to 50. So as you can, I, when I do that, you will see two, router 2, router 3, and router 4 from router 7 as a next stop to router 5 as a next stop. We will change immediately. It will change. Okay. Now what we will do, router SPF 1, address family IP 4, and then Area zero, IPv4 one. Why you didn't get router OSPF one? Address family, IPv4, area zero. Oh no, wait. Let's go back. No, area zero nine. Then, area zero, interface. A bit zero 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 three cost fifty commit and let's check the config again. Uh, now I should see yes zero 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 three is the fifty. So if I go to router two router three router four for that prefix eight 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 next up from uh, R seven is changed to R five very good. And same thing for the R3 and R4. R3, R4 is not pointing for 8888 anymore, R7. Good. Let's go to R4 as well. 8888, R5. Very good. Why I did that one? Because, uh, as I told you, I, I configured some extra stuff on R5, but not on R6 and R7. Those extra stuff like BFT config, etc. later on. We will shut down and we will see convergence times and so on and so forth. I didn't want to do uh, those config on R7 again and again. Now, R5. What I will do, as I told you, since 8888, R2's next stop anymore R5, if I ping uh, 8888, giving source loopback zero, this is good. And if I repeat, with the, let's say, 60,000 time, and at that moment, if I just stop this router, as you can see, we will wait. We will wait a lot. It was not too much. Huh? Actually, it was very fast. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it was very fast because I think the BFT etc. Kick, kicked in. I wish I wouldn't ping with the 60,000. 60, so probably we will not catch BFT kicked in and we just lose 
lost actually uh, only three packets. Now I should, um, but it shouldn't converge that fast, wait. Ah, it can because BFT also up here, sorry guys. So show BFT summary, yeah, BFT was up here. When I bring uh, router five back, first let me bring router five back, why it converts very fast, I let me show you, but let's see. It shouldn't normally converge that fast. I, I configured in advance BFTs and uh, other stuff, so that's why it's converged to alternate path very fast. In fact, why it didn't uh, get from the other vector, other pets, etc. So there should be normally conversions. Now, just I want to make sure that BFT is not there, and then let's check again. Okay, R8 is there, right? R8. You come up, yes. So which means R5 came back. R5 is back. OSPF heavy interface is up and BGP towards upstream. Towards upstream is up, towards uh, Rasi Factor is not yet. Waiting. It's up now. 9999 also up. Now, what I want to do is from BGP, I will remove BFT support there so let's go there and then remove it for test purpose i will put it back router bgp 100 and then neighbors upstream neighbors no neighbors no neighbors online 268 58 wait followers to BFT. Well, BFT. This file remote AS or peer group. Because I put the IP wrong. There is no 291 yet. Okay. BFT down. Show BFT summary. Let's make sure. We should clear it somehow. Now, uh, normally, it's uh, removed also from dash. Right, if you go dash, somebody, all of them down by on the right. Okay, this guy. Not country only, but I want to remove. <laughs> still up. It's completely not there, right? Sure. Yes, it's not there. Okay. Fine. Now what I want to do again, let's write this in this way. Then if I shut down that since BFT is not there. And and then R8 is not doing any multipathing. Okay. Uh, uh, because anyway, convergence will be very slow. I shouldn't see that fast convergence. Okay, let's ping again. This time a little bit lower, 40,000. And then let's go and then shut this, this guy. Wait, okay, good. Should wait like that? Yes. Now we are waiting. When this happened actually? Just now? now? Because also I have BFT session between the R2 and R5, and when I shut down, immediately R2 declares BFT down. But for the whenever we see R8, R8 here declares that BGP uh, timeout, 
BGP whole time. Then we will go to R2, and at that moment you will see uh, it will come. So here first you will see BGP will find an alternate path. Then R2 will start getting that and using that as well. If we should see both R2 and R3 operation. As you can see, still packet loss. Still packet loss. But that BFT on the R8 and the R5 was there. So this guy was immediately declaring this R5 went down and it was able to use R6 and it was very fast in fact. And if we go R2, it's still packet loss. Still packet loss. And let's go to R8 and wait there. It's more clean. How is it? Is uh, I see still packet loss. I mean, I see still in our class packet loss. Pe where people are going? You told me you will enjoy if I do lab, but uh, I don't see that. It's still waiting. Conversions, control plane, because this guy will declare, not RR, R8, will declare that, oh, neighbor went down. So IP BGP summary, still up. But whole time, whatever, it's three minutes, I think, for BGP by default. At some point, it will time out with R5. Link is up, doesn't matter. It, it will declare it. So R5 is completely down. Now it's got the notification, DGP that went down, as you can see, because it says what? Reset, whole time expire, whole time expire. DGP summary, it's now down. If we go to R2, of course, it continues to ping. Cut the point. But it was interesting, even BFT on R8, if it immediately catch R5 is down, how? R, let's say R6 still uh, started to use R, uh, R8 still immediately started to use R6, but R2 point of view, R2 would receive when the R5 fails from route reflector, one of those remaining path, in fact, R6 it would be because if this goes down, route reflector would choose the R6 as the second best. I arranged the cost in that way. So R6, it would be received by route reflector on R2, but it would take some time. Let's see what's happening and it's converging very fast otherwise. Let's bring it up. From here, link, link looks blue, not sure of the link link down. Now, ah, okay, link, link maybe up, but uh, router was, I think, gray, right? Now, R5 came back, and I want to put the that fallover configuration again there. Okay. Not like that config. Here's. Uh, I didn't configure here anyway, right? So, okay, let's remember. Okay. Water, BGP 100. Address family IP for neighbors towards upstream 192.168.58.8 follower 58.8, right? Yeah, 58.8. Okay. okay, maybe on the upper layer. Okay, now. Uh, Neighbor, one ninety one sixty eight fifty eight at eight. Yeah, it's here. And now VFT again there. Let's wait VFT session to come up. So VFT summary, it's up. Let's also make sure from our eight side. Show VFT summary, it's up with the R five. Now, what I want to do R five again will go down. R, but let's write it. Otherwise, when it comes up, I forget. 
uh, R5 BFT session with R8 is up now. Let's see, in this case, it shouldn't converge that fast because R2 is, seems, is receiving, at the moment, as you can see, R2's BGP next stop is what? Five. And then it will be six, but it is happening very fast by RR. It's very, very fast it's happening. Let's also check, I want to check one more thing. Show IP self 8888. Okay, good. And then detail, I think. Detail. Yeah, there is no, as you can see, there is no repair path, etc. Okay, and there is no backup path, repair path, etc. Right? Just single uh, path, which is R5. Okay. Now, again, let's ping 8888 source loop back 0, repeat count 10. Repeat count 40,000. And then let's shut down this R5. BFD immediately went down. Okay, Let, it's very fast, interesting. Okay, very fast. 40,000 40, even too much. Because I want to immediately see now. I cannot cut. I want to see the routing table of this guy now. So, I think the GP, I mean, GP table. 8888, still true 5, it seems. 58.8. Let's go to R8. Okay, BFT didn't repair down. So, IP, BGP, 2222, 6 and 7 available. And it is using. Six at the moment. Return traffic is very really fast converging, although this guy is showing. IP route 58, right? We have to troubleshoot this one nicely. 8888 now only. Port seven. When that happened, though, it's let it come back again. I couldn't troubleshoot it very fast, uh, and I I couldn't see very fast why it's converging like this. Okay, two five now. Eight 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 eight. Routing table says router six. It's convergence stuff. Sometimes we are waiting like this. Okay, router BGP says router six. Eight 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 eight. Because probably it's still bringing the session up R5 and router later. Still router six. But then if we go to router five, router five. Let's go to router five. So I have BGP summary. Okay, now with the router, okay, there. We need to see also here. Still router six. Yeah, now router five, eight, 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 as you can see. Now it is router five. The route table also says eh, router five. But when I remove the router five, immediately start sending the traffic. Immediately start sending the traffic. Wait, because 8888, 58.8. Am I doing the CMP or something for that?
58 no sports router file and he said no like 68 68.8 Good. Just single interface, no nothing repair, etc. Maybe leftover configuration, etc. Remains. I, I was thinking. Mm -hmm. I'm not expecting this fast. And okay, PFT on the other side is immediately finding. I can understand that. Declare down and start using this guy. But how? R2, okay, R2 also BFT immediately understand R5 went down, fine. But R2, when it, it doesn't remove 58, if it doesn't remove, if it sends, then the bucket would be black hole. So when it goes down, But of course it is withdrawing, but very fast. I mean, almost a second. So, because you are seeing minimum route advertisement in Torville is zero for IV on route reflector. Huh? We can test it very, very nicely, actually. If we know the configuration loop, minimum route advertisement in Torville. I think it's uh, on IBGP now zero. That's why we are seeing that. Let's let's increase it to maybe 30, and we can see the effect that because convergence, minimum route advertisement interval is happening very fast. But uh, if we would increase high, then if this this fast, probably for the convergence point of view, you wouldn't you wouldn't consider adpad. And now I will do adpad. Of course, uh, it will be for optimal routing as well, etc. But maybe for convergence, it's already very fast. I mean, if you can get faster than this, fine. Do you need that, etc. But I want to check something, which is uh, if, you, if I can find very fast minimum route advertisement interval or not. On the route reflector, of course. In fact, that, that should be also done on R6, etc. But R6 already sending. Route reflector receive it. Let me check. Anyway, it's there. So IP EGP eight 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 two 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 dash four two 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 two. I have two pets twenty six twenty seven. Ah, because we redistributed now, we are seeing over the top as well those uh, loopbacks. Normally, I should only see or in on the. For SPF side, I should see only BGP 8888 prefix. That's, that's why I told you, don't confuse them. They are coming because I had to redistribute those normally, create the prefix list, and then just send 2222 to that guy, uh, 8888, and that's it. 8888 should be learned from BGP. Okay, 8888, I am learning for from 5, 6, 7, 5, which I was looking at. And 5 is because shortest path. Uh, it is 5 is our best. Now, if I can configure for the neighbors, what I want to do is minimum route advertisement interval. Router SPF, router BGP, router BGP 100. Do you know anyone? I heart minimum route advertisement interval. Maybe it is totally different comment. EGP, MRI, maybe even out of the time interval. I don't know how it's there. EGP. No.
find must be to be to be like let's see if you can get that. So the whole time let's say thirty like not this we will make it the whole time for neighbor. No, not this way, no timers. Maybe advertisement. Maybe I'm wrong, just family. Maybe. Advertise. No. Maybe under neighbor configuration for neighbor. Neighbor two 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 two. Advertisement interval there. Advertisement interval. Okay, sixty tiny seconds. Uh, uh, thirty. Thirty seconds. No, thirty seconds is good. Okay, now route reflector to neighbor two should be to send in 30 seconds. Good. Let's go. And then R5 is up, R2 is dash. Everything is fine. BFDs are up. Let's pray it also. BFD is on R5. Good. Then, yeah, IBGP, I think it's zero. So, yeah, show, not show, ping. 8888 source back repeat 30,000 remove R5. Let's see 30 seconds we are waiting, it's not waiting. Immediately, it's red sending. Hmm. Because fifty eight is reachable via twenty six. At that moment, very fast it's doing though. 26.6. It's changing to that guy very fast. So IGP convergence is happening very fast here. IGP convergence happening very fast here on R2. Immediately it's changing to, as you can see, what is my BGP next stop for that prefix? 8888 prefix, 58.8, although this guy is down. Huh? So that in, uh, the R8 interface is shown there, but 58.8 BGP next stop, Here, as you can see, 26.6. And if you also again check 8888, now it changed to 7. Seven through 27. Although when it converge, control plane, when it converge, why it is choosing 7 on the route reflector? Didn't we say that uh, R60 second best? We said that, right? Have a look at the interface cost. What should be? Three, four, five, three, four, five. Okay, three is 50, uh, four, okay, okay, of course, four is 500, five is 100, that's why five is winning after three fails. Do you see the uh, cost or SPF cost? That's why, okay, fine. Then control plane converge. But data plane is converging very fast. Aha. Good. After 30 seconds, the uh, route reflectors when it starts sending, 
uh, we are seeing uh, R7 is the best bet now, as a permanent best bet because uh, from the right vector uh, towards R7 is uh, OSP of course is smaller than route reflector to R6 as you can see. If I increase this one to 1000 1, permanently R6 would, would stay there when R5 fails. At this moment if you check it is not routing loop I mean. Uh, again for 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8 router 7 is the 78 is the next stop and you are reaching the 78 through direct 27 link. But when that fails, immediately it starts sending traffic for that BGP next stop, that failed BGP next stop, 58. But, and what I will tell you the uh, prevention for that, it starts sending over the alternate IGP next stop. Uh, but it is that fast, uh, very, very fast, like almost like LFA. BFT is running, by the way, on R2. If I remove BFT session, of course, uh, ha, let's do that one as well. R2 to R5, BFT session I will bring down and you will see the convergence. It will not be that fast. It can be by chance. Why? OSPF hello that timer if it's, I think, 10, 30, whatever. If already 26 seconds passed and just four seconds remain, let's see. It will not be this fast, huh? Yeah. Next, we'll wait for 30 seconds. Now, uh, let's bring R5 again back. Let's bring it back. And let's remove R5 to R2 uh, BFT. You will see that R2 will not immediately st start sending traffic to R6 to reach to the... So Ethernet 01 interface to reach to the uh, 8888. Show BFT somebody. It is there now. R2 to R5, BFT, is, of course, they are not talking directly BGP. It's OSPF, so we will find OSPF. <coughs> or just to, from the interface, I can remove also. I think it should work to me. Uh, interface, Ethernet, 0, 0. And R2 towards R5. Interface, Ethernet. Zero, zero. Okay. Okay. Okay, we don't have BFD dash, but OSPF should be up with R5. Yeah. Okay, good. Now also, uh, what I want to do. Let's check from our five point of view as well. We want to say show BFT summary R5 only up towards um, BGP R8. Okay. So I feel this BF neighbor though, it's towards R2 dash. Now what I should see little bit, but what is the hello dead timer? So I do SPF neighbors. I think 40 seconds that time we have uh, with the R5. Okay, good. I think we can be ready. Ping 8888. Look back. By the way, at what time it's refreshing? Every 10 seconds sending hello, I think. So it's not counting down to less than 30 huh let's see yeah good that time i was looking for ping 8888 source loop back zero okay available and then repeat 40,000 again let's go to r5 Stop. Let's see. 30,000 is better, but anyway. Now we should wait for the OSPF to first declare down and then we will start the conversions. <laughs> yeah, you catch the point now. 
when OSPF dead time dead timer expires, by the way, I, I need to give a break when we see this one. I need to smoke. And also water. That time expired. Now we are waiting for conversions. So you see now BFT in action. You were sending traffic in uh, less than a second. Now you waited the wait timer to expire, and then after that, still a couple more seconds. We will continue, hopefully with the Edpet as well. Huh? Now let's have a break. Okay. 
you understand so far? Guys. Hello. Who understands what I am doing? Any question? Let's move on. Let me show you Edpet as well. It seems you are tired. You don't give feedback, but uh, let me show you Edpet as well for the recordings later on. Some people can benefit. Uh, this one's uh, probably you wouldn't deal in the exam. Optimal route reflection, Edpet, etc. But understanding would help for general BGP understanding. Let's start BGP uh, R5 uh, routers. Let the product, uh, the system converge. Let's wait for that. Little bit. Eight, 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 eight. Still R7. When it comes back totally, we will see eight, 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 eight here with the R5 as the next stop. Not yet. Oh, because also we changed the minimum route advertisement in terms on route reflector. Thirty seconds. It will take care anyway. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Still not there. Waiting. Meanwhile, the SPF with R5 is fine. BGP with the route reflectors. Route reflectors is sending 8888. Still R6 is there. R5 now. Good. So I have to route 8888 with R5 as you can see. Now what will I do? Just not to end end to end demonstration, but just I will uh, demonstrate uh, at pet future. That's why let's remove those redistribution first. Let's clean the BGP a little bit. So let's remove those redistribution from R5, R6, R7. Just seize the. We will see eight 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 eight. Where is BGP? Redistribution. Of this family IPv4, new redistribute for SPF 1 and also R7. SPF 1. Now, when we go to other guys throw IP BGP anymore. Let's wait a little bit more. This guy is not in the distribution since we didn't configure or reconfigure, but when we shut it down, we didn't save to the NVRAM, so it's not there. Just the conversion. BGP, now it's done. Now clean just 8888, we are seeing anymore. 
as you can see huh? what is the next stop 555 because there is no optimal route reflection and route reflectors believe that shortest path as you can see route 5 go to the route reflector again route reflector why it is choosing that one because on the route reflector shortest IGP goes towards the R R5 is the shortest one again let me show you why check the SPF cost shortest is towards R5 which is 0003 interface on route reflector this one okay what I will do though I will send all the pads so this is not how route reflector would work it would just send the best pet from its point of view I will send all the pads okay router bgp100 additional address family ipv for the guest additional pets send and receive and then uh, also additional pet selection policy rod policy i created one rod policy i called it orhan and commit i will show you now rod policy as well show rod policy and then rod policy rod show rod policy somewhere here is rod policy we will see as you can see set pet selection all you can send you can send two pets here three pets i i want to send all which is three pets for us all three of them now normally you need to configure also on these guys let me show you at pet configuration because i told you not only route reflector but also route reflector client as well needs to understand a pet pet identifier field that's why i configured already on the r2 r3 r4 also on the r5 r6 r7 let me show you that as you can see under address family ipv4 r2 i am showing you now head pad send receive and install all those pads now let's see the this guy but did we commit the config on the route reflector it seems it's fine now I did for any cast. Send and receiving and route policy is also there. It's committed anyway. Should start seeing it here. In fact, let's clear on the route. And then R3, R4. The loading should be okay. Huh? Yeah, now I am receiving all the pets, right? As you can see here, though, not yet converged. All of them comes, but wait a second for the convergence. So I will choose one of them as the best from my point of view anymore, because I can get all of them. I will choose best from uh, whatever I believe is the best. So R2 will choose R5, R3 will choose R6, and R4 will choose R7. And next stops are reachable. Okay, now what you are seeing though, uh, as I told you, R2 is choosing R5 as the best. This one, it shows the best pet, and the others are what? Add pet, uh, IA additional pet. Okay, 
Also, I will show you something else. And by the way, let's go to R3 and R4. Let's see that we have also three pets on those guys. But now R3, because it can all those three pets, it can select from its point of view best, which is R6, because shortest IGP cost. And R4 chooses out of those three, it received also three. Oh, that one, because of IGP cost, it's choosing R7. Now, if we have a look at the SAF table as well, for that 8888 detail, we will see that repair pet as well now. So, 5 is the best, and then 6 are repair pet. To, uh, to that next of 5, I am using Eternal 00. Next of 6, I am using Eternal 01. I install in my fifth table, it's in the SAF. So that's why now my conversions will be very fast. And now I am also doing optimal routing without optimal route reflection feature. Why? Because every client got all those three pets and they are choosing from their point of view whoever is the best. Any question? How was the lab? What do you think? Really? You just want to talk now? I, I asked you also a couple minutes ago, nobody talked. Sure, now questions. Go ahead, lots of questions you can ask. Let's talk. As I see, optimal route reflection, EdPet gave the same result. You are right. Optimal route re reflection. Uh, helped those R2, R3, R4 to do optimal routing, but single pet you have. So they, it didn't help for the convergence. This also helps for the con convergence because you don't need to wait the route reflector will send all those minimum route advertisement, etc. those timers, etc. Need to lab it on myself. Sure. Uh, Navit, are you here? Let's save this one and then uh, <laughs> and then uh, let's also upload how we were saving this config and then we can upload. I'm not sure, just uh, show me now it and then we can. I think I wrote the config on every device. But anyway, let's answer the question so we can uh, save the config and upload to the Dropbox. Optimal route reflection have the benefit of add pet without installing, yes. Yes, you don't need to install, but you guarantee the optimal routing only with this one. So that's why optimal route reflection, you, you don't compare normally with add pet. They are complementary features, right? Uh, but if you are only looking to send single pet and uh, optimal routing for each and every client point of view, route reflector client point of view, then uh, you can compare them and then optimal route reflection is a good feature, you know, uh, because it doesn't put the burden on the route reflector client, but uh, it is much work for the route reflection because reverse SPF, etc. is done also. What else? When enable EdPet and if we, if the cost to all another PEs is the same, is the same result will, will result in CMP. From where uh, you mean? If the cost to all another PEs is the same, from where to PEs, I don't get the point. Wilson. <clears throat> Paul, you said you, you have questions. Go ahead. Anyone have any question? Do you see optimal route reflection a lot? Only once, but be, uh, one of the biggest tier one operator they are using. PR, mostly at bed. Optimal route, optimal. Route reflection mostly at bed, but I didn't need to point. Your question is about, I missed it. Say we do BGP multipad everywhere with no route reflection. I understand this won't scale, but wouldn't it be simpler in this case? Of course. Agreed. But you, in real life, you may not have this uh, ECMP. To, to the next stop everywhere. So you have multiple links and different costs from the source to the BGP next stop. This is a, in production network. You will see like that, not the CMP to the BGP next stop always. 
So because, because generally you connect uh, you know smaller cities to major cities, uh, and then between major cities you have different capacity, and those different capacity reflect on different cost, and uh, you may not end up, and most most of the time you don't end up with the same cost from the each router to BGP next stop. That's why we play with other stuff. But also optimal routing. This is just from the cost point of view. I told you some customers in real life might give you good money. You can give SLA and you can tell them they can force you to let's say send to some peers, not other peers, etc. Can you explain again the difference between Edpad and I will kill you. Edpad, you are sending either uh, two pads or all pads. If you have ten uh, different exit points with all comment, uh, I would send ten of them, yeah? and or I would just send two of them. Why I am sending three of them here? Because every PE crowd repeater client in my network believes different guys my next door. So R two, R five, R three, R six, R four, R seven. Huh? Uh, that's why I need to send all those three gateway next stop to each and every client. Otherwise, if you will just send R5, R6 to all of them, then from R4 point of view, uh, R4's uh, best pet would, would be R7, but you are not sending, so R4 will be suboptimal routing. That's why I sent all of them. So at pet, you are sending all the pets, you consume more device resources, but you guarantee optimal routing as well as you since. You can place those with the Edpad additional install command. I placed in the Ceph table, as you can see, on uh, for that prefix repair route. So that's why what I did here, not only optimal routing, but also I am doing BGP pick here. Pick edge, we call it, because I have multiple edge next stop in my FIP table. I call it uh, pick edge. In this case, if R5 goes down, Depends on your IGP convergence, your BGP will converge in that past. Okay. Okay. In case of multi array backbone, the RR, what happened to here? The RR should be an ABR to get the full link state. To, no. RR, if it's just connect to ABR also, RR can get the full topology from ABR of the router. So you can extend the IGP between the ABR and the RR, or you don't need that actually. If you don't want to extend the IGP to the RR, this topology could be just offline RR, so you don't have to inject the RR into the IGP. You could run between ABR and the RR, BGP link state address family, and then ABR would inject all the topology information from multiple area to the BGP uh, over BGP link state, it would help us totally because I am using BGP link state address family. Didn't I show you on the route reflector? I uh, basically under OSPF I put that I put that there. Where is it? At the top somewhere. BGP link state. So I am advertising my topology information. In that case, multi area design ABR to the route reflection. Route reflection. Vector, you can extend via either IGP or BGP LS. Here, somewhere OSPF configuration, as you can see here, distributed link state. Okay, what else? Mean from R2 to R5, R2 to R6, and R2 to R7, the same cost enabled at PET gave us the ECMP or only still choose one. No, wait. If you have same cost but with the route reflector, still with the route reflector, Wilson. Route reflector is there. At pet you are being on the route reflector. You take all those three, huh? And then on the let's say router two towards all those next stop. If you have ECMP, and in this case you can do multipet, IBGP multipet as well. Okay. Not same result. So you 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 can use multipet as well in this case. If you have ECMP when you send from route reflector with Edpad, all those three pads. Actually, let me if we can very fast what we can do for that. Let's try. 
uh, our interface is Ethernet 001 and 2, I think. Ethernet 001 and 2. At the moment, Ethernet 0, 0, 010, 120, and 230. So I showed this one. I arranged differently because of optimal route reflection. But now I am. If I change, if I write this configuration later on while you study, eh, hopefully you can understand what's happening. I will give you the configuration file. Internet 01, also let's say IP or SP of cost 10. Internet interface 02, IP or SP of cost 10. So you have ECMP now towards those next boards. Okay, show. Uh, run can x zero zero ten one ten two ten. Now, uh, from BGP, I am receiving eight 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 eight, right? So, addition of that, etc., there. Uh, since I have short same distance to the next stops, so 58, 60, 68, and 78. Let's look at the routing table. So 58, 20 through 5, 68, 26, and 78, 27. So now, what is the IBGP multiplet? Router BGP 100, uh, address family, address family IPv4. Uh, what is that command? IBGP multiplet or maximum pet something like that. Maximum pets IBGP three, let's say. Okay, what happened now? I enabled the multiplet. So because why I can enable the multiplet, but let's just very fast remember the uh, BGP pet selection steps. Local prep ASP origin met EBGP to IBGP. Then after that, IGP calls to BGP next stop. All of them same at the moment. IGP calls to BGP next stop also. I just make them 10, 10, 10. So after that step, we can do multiple, but manually, I we need to do I told you before, manually I configured it. Now if I check my routing table for 8888, I am seeing three of those next stop ECMP. Yes. You got the answer, please. Any other question? Is optimal route reflection negotiated on BGP capabilities? No, uh, optimal route reflection is not capability. I told you before, optimal route reflection just on the route reflectors. You don't configure, you don't negotiate anything between the client and the RRR. So RR point of view only, not the client configuration at all. Adpad, both, it's capability. That's why I configured on both client and the route reflectors. Any other, did I miss any question? Please, you, uh, you got the answer as well. I think it was useful. What do you think? Sometimes I should do labs. As well, huh? People uh, probably will not read your comments. Oh, good comments. Sometimes I need to do that and understand right? So you can see what happens every step. Yeah, sure. In fact, uh, here, there are, there was some, you know, special stuff. Yeah, you don't have to remember, but took my a lot of time to why reverse SPF on the route reflector was not working. Uh, in fact, it, it, it is not working because in ISS it is not required, but in OSPF, for the reverse SPF to work on the route reflector, route reflector should see, let me go there, let me show you something. It took almost maybe more than hours. So, uh, ORR SPF database. So, here you see actual root. This actual root, the router ID of those guys. And then, uh, this one is not seen unless in OSPF. I say this is not the case. In OSPF, unless you enable MPLS traffic engineering. And in the MPLS traffic engineering router ID, if you don't show that 3333 there. Okay. So that's why here in this topology, I configured MPLS traffic engineering tunnels. And then 
on the interface towards route reflector also you will see uh, towards route reflector on this one Ethernet 1.0 okay and also under OSPF process I showed that router ID for the infrastructure engineering router ID with X0 if you remove this this stuff uh, optimal route reflection will not work so I mean uh, for design I wouldn't remember this I wouldn't consider all this stuff but uh, why I would do optimal route reflection uh, what are the pros and cons compared to other methods like EdPet is just one of them uh, there is another one shadow varage there is another one unique rd per year per PE. in each of these methods we are basically sending either more than one uh, pet to the uh, RR clients huh? uh, we are sending more than one pet for multiple reasons in this case at pet i sent three pets and just now i configure ecmp towards next stop i i did bgp multipet if you don't configure ecmp or not configure in real life of course you don't have luxury to do ecmp everywhere because you have 100 gig here 40 gig over the another another city in your pops between your pops etc so then you end up with the uh, different costs so still you can do for example phase three route so which means what you can place the alternate backup next stop in your fib which would fed, uh, which would help your faster convergence guys because you don't wait control plane to converge you start using it then if control plane router tell, tells us better path okay we will follow what he says can we quick review for shadow RR comparing uh, not with the lab because uh, these images don't, don't support that anyway but um, as a theory we can go through for sure because all those topics also bgp zero hero cross contact so this one optimal route connection here before this one i have first changing the behavior of route reflector via shadow RR and headpad i am explaining first shadow RR here in this shadow RR case either you put uh, second box or on the same box different context but the idea is one RR is regular RR which is advertising the best pet another route reflector which we call shadow RR its job is to select also whatever regular RR selects as the best but advertise second best pet so here in this topology RR1 and the shadow RR needs to select the same guy as the best pet which let's say PE1 both despite uh, both of them topologically needs to be on the same place so let's say IGP cost is deciding that both of their IGP cost towards PE1 should be smaller than PE2 let's say huh? so they end up with choosing PE1 as the best but regular RR to PE3 will advertise PE1 as the best for this customer prefix shadow RR will advertise second best who is second best PE2 and at the end PE3 will still get both of these next stop so different approach than 8 pet as you can see and the uh, huge differences because this guy with this approach the water approach we are multiplying the number of ibgp session in our network as you can see with edpad over just single ibgp session without creating extra IGP se ibgp session on the clients etc over just single IGP, ibgp session with edpad i advertise uh three pets in fact huh? so uh, but there are other comparison comparison uh, criteria as well so when I, if I finish all of them, these are all comparisons uh, steps. Maybe not all, but uh, some people might can find more. I just edit these ones I found useful. Any question? okay by the way this uh, lab stuff is taking a lot of time even explanation <laughs> we just explained two concepts edpet and the uh, uh, optimal route reflection and almost two hours i think we have them together now uh, yeah i mean especially if you know a little bit the concept if you are not very new a lab can uh, help you but 
probably uh, you will you guys will not see my, me uh, doing configuration a lot uh, maybe a couple times i can do this uh, yeah interesting stuff maybe uh, not bringing OSP neighborship up or bringing uh, authentication between two peers etc but like uh, for example carrier supporting carrier we can configure different transport mechanism ldp in customer carrier backbone carrier rsvp then some tunnels there and then uh, when end to end lsp pass through we can fail the uh, primary protection sorry protected protected link on the backbone carrier rsvp then traffic will go through the protection path on the backbone carrier rsvp tunnel at that moment if you check the uh, data plane you will see five label in the label stack those kind of things are a little bit interesting maybe to understand end-to-end -end operation data plane how many labels what are those labels uh, which one is used which purpose blah 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 I mean, uh, yeah we can go through probably those kind of things but even for the CC enterprise too much in my opinion uh, maybe CCSP guys or CCD guys would be better CCD no but CCSP maybe so any question for this more of course uh, this topology even can be made uh, very fancier i mean it doesn't look very nice though it helped us to explain good topics yeah cool probably tomorrow i didn't still send uh, the agenda to the idol uh, we will go through if i can finish we will go uh, and tomorrow evening we will talk about the ripple iot routing protocol before i mentioned uh, and wednesday with you guys we can talk about some eigip design huh? just please continue to follow the skype group and bye for now